In the previous video, we showed that for the harmonic oscillator, if we give it an initial displacement of A with zero initial momentum, then we get this trajectory x of t equals A cosine omega t. And this omega function, this omega constant, equals the square root of k over m, where m is mass and k is some constant, which appears in the potential energy. And the potential energy v of x equals one half kx squared. And we're using this as a model for uh, chemical bonds and other things that vibrate, where x is some position coordinate which represents the displacement away from equilibrium. So displacement either to a greater or shorter distance than some equilibrium bond length away from some minimum energy bond. Okay, so we want to ask the question now, what is the energy of such a system over time? So we know that energy has two components. It has kinetic energy and potential energy. And we said up above that the potential energy is just equal to 1 half kx squared. And we have that x over time is this function here. So our potential energy over time is just 1 half k a squared cosine squared omega t. We just took this trajectory through time and squared it, as is the case for x here. Okay, now for kinetic energy, we know that kinetic energy is 1 half mass times velocity squared, 1 half mv squared. And this v, we know that we can calculate velocity from the derivative of x with respect to time. And so if we take the time derivative of the function a cosine omega t, that we're going to get minus a omega sine omega t. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, and the derivative of cosine kt is going to give us from this from the chain rule on the inside another term omega is going to pop out. Okay, so that's what v is going to equal. So then v squared is the square of this, which is going to be a squared omega squared sine squared omega t. <coughs> okay, so our Kinetic energy then, writing that up there, is going to be 1 half m times v squared, which is a squared omega squared sine squared omega t. Okay, so that's all well and good, but you might say, well, we've got this ka squared up here, and we've got this ma squared omega squared down here. Uh, those two constants don't quite match up, but let's take a look at that below. We can show that for this ma squared omega squared, we know that omega, as we've defined it up here, is the square root of k over m. So omega squared is just going to be k over m, the, the spring constant over the mass. And we've got an m here. We've got a 1 over m here. So those two cancel out. So that leaves us with 1 half k a squared. Okay, now these, <clears throat> so substituting this in up here for this 1 half m a squared omega squared, now our total kinetic energy, T, is going to be 1 half k a squared sine squared omega t. Okay, now adding those two together, we have E is going to be equal to V plus T. So now they have the same uh, prefactor. We can factor that out, 1 half K A squared. And on the inside from the potential energy V, we have cosine squared omega T. And from the kin potential, uh, kinetic energy T, we have the sine squared omega t. 
And now, <clears throat> if you're remembering from trigonometry, there should be something, a uh, buzzer going off in your head somewhere, that cosine squared of something plus sine squared of something, that all is equal to 1. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals 1 for any value of x. So this means our final energy, as a function of time, because we did plug in explicit coordinates of x over time to get this, is just one half k a squared. So, what does our total energy of a of a harmonic oscillator depend on? It depends on this k, which is how stiff this quadratic potential is that that our particle lives inside, and this a squared, the square of the initial displacement at which we put the particle before we let go because we put it at some initial displacement a and gave it zero momentum to start so the energy out through time is constant and that is a conservation of energy so this is a conservative system there's no mechanism that we've given the particle to lose or gain energy this will be the energy regardless and so over time the particle is just going to transition its energy between kinetic and potential energy at its highest displacement, it's going to be all potential. At its lowest displacement, at a at the minimum, uh, at the minimum bond distance x equals zero, it's going to be all kinetic, and it's just going to transfer back and forth between kinetic and uh, potential energy for the classical version of this particle. So this is our uh, this is going to conclude our exploration of the classical harmonic oscillator, and we're going to begin looking at how quantum mechanics might be different. And one respect in which we're going to pay particular attention to is for this displacement in classical mechanics, this displacement can be any value we want, whereas we know in, in quantum mechanics we're going to have only certain allowed values for certain quantities and uh, the amount that this that this energy can change by, so the amount that this displacement changes, is going to be something which can only take on certain discrete values.